A man with Tourette's syndrome was capable of repeatedly catching flies in midair. When a neurologist asked him how he was able to move so fast, he said it wasn't that he was moving fast, but that the flies were moving so slow. Perception of time can vary for a number of different reasons. Your age, your emotional state, even temperature can make time seem faster or slower. People who experience life and death scenarios talk about a slowed time effect. People describe falls from rooftops as feeling like eternities. Drivers describe car accidents as having happened in slow motion. It's something similar when athletes talk about being in the zone. Baseball players talk about a fastball gliding slowly towards them. Tennis players say they can evaluate and choose from a dozen different options between the time they hit the ball and it's hit back to them. Are these experiences merely perceived as slower, or are we entering an altered state, one where we can think and respond faster than normal? And if this is an altered state, can we consciously choose to turn this on and off? I'm Rusty Ward and this is Science Friction. Many of you have said you wanted the power of super speed or the ability to freeze time. I feel the same way. The Flash is one of my favorite superheroes. I want to be able to think, move, and react faster than an ordinary human being. I want to dodge bullets like Neo or catch birds with my bare hands like this guy. Oh A scientist by the name of David Eagleman tested the near-death experience to find out if people experiencing the slowed time effect were able to perceive things faster than normal. He had his students take part in a SCAD diving exercise. SCAD stands for Suspended Catch Air Device. Basically, people are just dropped 150 feet into a net. Each student reported having experienced a slowed time effect. To judge whether their perceptions were heightened, he gave each student a watch. The numbers on the watch moved too fast for the human eye to see. He thought that if his students entered an enhanced state of perception, they would be able to see the numbers on the watch. It turns out that the numbers were still a blur even when the students were experiencing the slow motion effect. Eagleman believes that in high stress scenarios, the brain records more detail and then in retrospect, it seems like time is slowed. Athletes are experiencing something different. They have trained so much in their particular sport or martial art that they have overlearned the actions they have to perform. They have created powerful neural pathways in their nervous system. And these pathways enable them to perform specific routines, such as throwing a punch or shooting a gun, much faster than an untrained individual. A study in the 1960s found that track runners were pushing off from their starting blocks before their brains were consciously aware that the starting gun had been fired. These reactions to the sound were automatic. They didn't even need higher thought. The study proposed that the belief the runners had that they were hearing the gun and then pushing off from the blocks was an illusion created by the brain. The purpose of the illusion is to make sense of events. Basically, in comic book terms, their brains retconned their pasts. So training can greatly enhance the speed of specific routines. But what if we're encountering a completely novel situation, one that we haven't prepared ourselves for? Are there other ways that we can perceive and move things faster? Some afflictions such as Parkinson's disease and Tourette's syndrome affect neural speed. One of these diseases, encephalitis lethargica, was studied extensively in the 1960s by Dr. Oliver Sacks. Some patients took hours to scratch their head while others seemed to be stuck in a constant state of fast forward. Dr. Sachs treated these patients with a drug called L-DOPA. Under L-DOPA, some of the patients that were slowed down sped up. One patient sped up to such a degree that Dr. Sachs's students were unable to play a game of catch with her. They would throw the ball to her and she would throw it back to them so quickly it would bounce off the tips of their fingers. Their movements, the students, were recorded at one-seventh of a second. The patient's movements were recorded at one-tenth of a second. So we know that drugs and disease can control neural speed. The trick is figuring out which part of the brain controls neural speed and the most effective and safe way to turn the throttle. The problem is that there's no one part of the brain that controls our perception of time. It's a complex network of interactions but we're learning more about those interactions and how to manipulate them every day so that one day in the future we may be able to take a pill and freeze time. Check out this playlist I've created of some of the world's fastest human beings. Thanks for watching and be sure to tell me what superpower you want.